All right, hey everybody, welcome to Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. My name is Tyler Pearson. I'm here with the Heifer USA team. My colleague Sarah Bacher, horticulture specialist here at Heifer USA. And in this video, we're going to be talking all about how to grow vegetables in the wintertime, what varieties you want to choose, what equipment you might use, and so much more. We'll be answering your questions along the way, whether you're joining us live right now for the broadcast, just put them in the live chat, or if you're watching the recorded version of this video, ask your questions down in the comments below and we'll answer every single one of them. We've got a lot to showcase here from the three acre certified organic market garden at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. And uh, we're so excited to show you all the cool things that we're gonna be growing now as it's getting closer to the first frost date and that we're gonna be growing into the winter as well. So whether you are a home gardener, if you are just growing inside in one single pot, or if you have a certified organic market garden yourself, just like we do here, there will be tons of information in this video for you to up your farming game. So thanks so much for joining us. Stick around, we got a lot to show you, and we're gonna get started. Sarah, how are you doing today? I am good, trying to keep ahead of this wind here. Yeah, it is a little bit <laughs> a little bit windy, it is. It is um, a little windy, but it's, it's feeling good. We're really excited to be back in that fall weather again. It's one of my favorite times to farm honestly. Yeah, I don't know if folks can see beyond the trees, but they're starting to change colors over there just a little bit. Still pretty green, but it's getting really beautiful, nice and Definitely. cool, which means that frost is approaching. Yes, very soon. <laughs> I think uh, our regular frost date here in Perryville is right around November 1st to the 15th, somewhere in that range. So we are getting pretty close. So uh, it's kind of been a rush to try and get everything ready. Uh, so I guess let's get right into it and just talk about kind of what we're doing, what I've already planned for, and what we are planning to continue doing through the winter. Um, so let's start with the basics, I suppose. Let's talk about crop selection. Um, so that's kind of just the basics of all gardening in general. Um, a lot of what you do for every single season is look into what types of crops are best for that variety of time as well as your climate. And so what we've done here is everything we've got out in the field right now is all what you might call frost tolerant, um, somewhat frost tolerant, they're, they're hardy crops. So they're gonna take a little bit of some of that frost and they're gonna survive. Um, they wouldn't take like a really, really deep freeze for several days at a time, but they will survive a little bit of that. And so we've already decided to do that. One big family for some of those cool season crops that you're looking at is the brassica family, which kind of extends to a lot of what you do in the garden. So you see we've got three big rows here of brassicas. These are collards and we've got some cabbages going on over here. Let's go start just up at the top yeah, and, and uh, just get a close up on kale. some of these crops that are in the ground. So yeah, we're gonna walk all around our garden in this video today. So you'll get an up close front row seat view at all the crops in the ground, be able to ask any questions you might have about how we're growing them to help you along in your journey as well. And first is the kale. Yeah, right? so we've got about two rows here of kale. Um, this is a curly kale variety. Next to it, we've got a uh, red Russian kale. Um, farther down, we've got some of the dinos, uh, the lucinento, lucinto, sorry, kales. Um, they're all in the brassica family. They're, they've all got this hardy uh, type of a leaf that will actually survive a pretty, pretty decent frost. Uh, I remember during our really big cold snap that we had last year, you could still see, see kale poking out from all of the snow we had and it was still harvestable, which was pretty crazy. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> kale is one that will grow in the snow even almost. Oh yeah. Like yeah. It, it is a, a trooper. It's amazing. You got to dig down to it, but then you can pull it right out. I, I did a lot of farming back in Wisconsin and that's what we did a lot of <laughs> was, was some of those colder varieties. And it gets so. really sweet too, like yes, in the cold. Absolutely. It actually benefits from the cold. Yeah, the kale that you try to grow during the summer season is not going to be nearly as sweet as the kale that you'll get once you have the frost approaching. Cool. I'm going to jump in here real quick, say hi to some of our audience members who are watching. Uh, let's see, Julie Presley from Canberra, Australia. What up, mate? Thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, at home with Sheree from Minnesota in zone four. Oh. Let's see, um, Aaron Reynolds right here in Conway, Arkansas. Hey, Aaron, long time no chat. Glad you're joining us <laughs> for the live stream. Thanks so much and good to see you here. Um, you got an amazing daughter, by the way. She's on staff here at Heifer USA, for those who don't know, and she's super duper talented. Uh, let's see, Ben Bradley in Perrin, just down the road, if that's Perrin, Arkansas. Um, 
Live Love Pure Natural. Thank you guys all so much for joining us live here today out at the ranch to talk about growing vegetables in wintertime. We'll be answering your questions along the way, showing you all the beautiful stuff in this garden. So, kale, a great producer throughout the winter months. Yeah. Do you ever have to cover it up? Yes, I would recommend if you were going to get a really deep freeze and you knew the soil itself was going to freeze, you're getting down to maybe 15 below, somewhere in there, I would cover it with a row cover uh, just to try and, and protect it a little bit. But I mean, even if you don't have row cover, a lot of the times if it freezes, it'll even come back. Kale is very hardy cool. like that, which is very nice. And now, a lot of folks are seeing the, this black t giant tarp on the oh, ground. Yes. Can you explain just real quick what you got going on with this? Yeah. So uh, one of the basics, I think, in regenerative agriculture is always to keep the soil covered. Um, and that also really works well for market gardening because you have a lot of uh, weed pressure. And so in order to make sure that you're able to flip your crops really quickly, um, what we'll do is so you can actually see next to the kale here, we just harvest uh, about six or seven beds of beets this past week mm -hmm. and so we're already we've worked on we pulled our tarps over those beds so that we can actually get some of these greens starting to decompose back into the soil mm -hmm. we're not going to have the weed pressure and we're still keeping that soil slightly warmer than the surrounding soil as well so if we wanted to plant into it again we could um, but this will probably stay covered for the majority of the winter uh, we're pretty much just going to stick with the crops that we've got in here that are already hardy. We're going to keep those in the ground. We're not going to be putting as much into the ground outside of our tunnels. Uh, so we try to keep them covered as much as possible so that they're ready to plant into as early as possible in the spring. Awesome. So <clears throat> terminating old crops, keeping that mm -hmm. soil warm, keeping uh, the, the beautiful soil from getting washed away, blown yes, away even probably. Yes, that's huge, because that's your biggest resource when you're doing any kind of gardening, is your soil, so you want to protect it at all costs. And uh, I see you're using many things, despite all this wind, we're still, still <laughs> yeah, getting blown back a little see. bit, but we got bricks, yeah, we got just, sandbags. You got a little of everything in and, here. <laughs> uh, these are, do, is it silage tarp or silage tarp? Silage tarp. It? Silage tarp. Mm -hmm. right, yeah, I've it's the same it type of, ways. yeah, it's the same type of tarp that you use. You'll see like big, of areas of, of hay that they try to cover for winter and you'll see them wrapped in this plastic. That's the same type of tarp that we use here. Uh, but if you aren't able to get these large tarps, uh, they don't necessarily have to be silage tarps. You can use regular tarps, you can use blankets. I've heard of people using rugs before, like anything to keep I've, the I've soil I've used old covered. carpet in my yeah, garden at see? home. There yep. you go. Anything that keeps the soil covered is, yep. is what you're going for. All right, a couple more brassica crops, um, yeah. right? Still in the brassica family? Yeah, absolutely. What are we growing here? These are collards. Collards, love and So collards, collards are, uh, they are hardy. I would not say they're as hardy as some of the other brassicas, but we've been able to harvest on these pretty far into the winter in the past. Um, yeah, they, they've been doing really well out here. You can see. All right. Them. Yeah. We got a couple of quick questions. Oh, let's do it. I see I'm not alone in using old carpet remnants. <laughs> Aaron Reynolds also uses old carpet. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, we do have a question though from Ben Bradley. He wanted to know about, uh, if you could use like pond liner for huh. a cover. Yeah, that would probably work. I, I would it's really so. similar to a silage, yeah, a silage tarp. Silage tarp, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're able to drag it around yourself. I mean, you can see here we've got this cut up into strips, and I kind of did that just for ease of motion for myself. So any of these tarps, I can technically move by myself. Whereas when you get them as a really large amount, it's going to be like a hundred feet by hundred feet, something like that, and they're really, really heavy. So anything that you can drag around yourself that's easy to move and reposition, go for it. Awesome. It could be exciting. <laughs> hey, that, that's a great question, Ben. Thanks so much for asking that. Yeah. I, I, we're always all about repurposing what you have on the yes. farm or in your garden to make it work so you don't got to buy something new. And then maybe that's your new thing. <laughs> exactly, right? You might just start a trend, make a YouTube video about it, and yeah. the rest of the world will be doing it. So these beds, you got kind of all uniform bed shapes and sizes here. We tell the audience yeah. just a little bit about what types of like bed shape for these raised beds you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So for the most part, we do all of our beds on a 30 inch, uh, what they call a 30 inch bed, uh, four foot centers. So you've got your 30 inches is from this side of the bed to this side. And then you've got the extra amount in between for your walkway. This one got a little bit wider. We were testing some stuff out with the BCS, but you know, it kind of helps with walkways anyway, but that's generally what we're going for, especially when we get into our tunnels. because those are a lot tighter spacing. Okay, couple of quick questions. Um, let's see, at home with Cherie, she wants to know, 
what is the lowest temperature that you transplant kale seedlings from hmm. seed trays to the raised bed, raised bed. So there's a lot of factors when you when it comes to actually transplanting out. Um, you, they can technically take some of those temperatures, but when they are just little seedlings being transplanted out, they don't have the ability to handle that cold nearly as much as something that's been in the ground a little bit longer. So what I would do is actually s just think backwards from you know your first hard frost and give it you know a couple of weeks of good time to get that plant hardened in the ground before that frost hits so that it can get its roots established and it's not totally shocked whenever it does get uh, frozen a little bit. So uh, definitely start with your frost date, work back from there uh, is what I always try to do. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to jump in here. Uh, so yeah, at home, Mishere, thank you so much for asking that great question. We hope uh, you got some value out of that. If you guys are getting value out of this live stream and you're not a subscriber to our channel here at Heifer USA, Go ahead and hit that like and that subscribe button for us. That will help us reach more people, continue these live streams into the future, uh, and just promote the channel. Uh, got another great qu question about collard greens. This one is coming from Echo Blue Farms. Uh, let us know where you're from, Echo Blue. Uh, they, they say that's their first time growing collard greens and wants to know if they're cut and come again, or does he just cut the whole plant? Does he harvest the larger leaves? How do you harvest? Greens. That's a good question. Great I question. can show you right now, actually. It. It's definitely a cut and come again, but I just break them off just like you would kale. Um, so with any one of these big brassica, these coal crops, you've got a main stem, you've got your leaves, so you can literally just push down on the stem and it pops right off. So you can do a really quick bunch, just push down on them all, have them all bunched up right there, and so you can actually do these bunches very quickly. So you just harvest from the bottom up. What, Correct. What do you always? Yeah. What do you always want to try? Like as it's growing, what do you leave behind? Um, I would leave behind if you're seeing any of these little tiny guys. I try to pull those off, leave them in the path that just ends up feeding the pathway, mm -hmm. um, and then they've got some some bug damage to them. I usually would leave those as well. And, and the stuff in the in the center, you center definitely here. want to leave this. So this is where your growth is coming from. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be your. I believe it's called an apical meristem for all those biologists hey, out there. Nice. Let's get that. Um, <laughs> so that's where your the majority of your growth is coming from that center. So as long as you leave that center alone, you don't break any of that. It'll just keep coming back and it'll keep getting taller and larger leaves. What size bunches do you usually like harvest? Uh, and how do you what do you market them as? Or yeah, what? so usually I'll say they're about an eight eight ounce bunch is kind of what I go for. It's gonna be about this big around when you're holding the bunch, if you can kind of see that. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to go for leaves that are a little bit bigger than what I was just showing you. Mm -hmm. So any leaves that are, you know, this is buggy, but about that size, bigger, somewhere around there. And then you're gonna bunch them all. We've got a rubber band. You've got your bunch here. And then I usually trim up the ends as well, just cool. to make it look nice. Awesome. Hey, Echo Blue from Huntsville, Texas, by the way. Okay, there you go. Great question. Thank you so much. Um, I hope that uh, answered your question. I hope you guys can see the value in these live streams. You guys, can, it's just like you're here without having to leave your home <laughs> or your farm. You got questions. Hopefully we'll have answers. Uh, if other folks in the chat have other ideas or other answers, please feel free to chime in and help us answer all these questions as well. Let's learn from each other. Let's grow together as a farming community. And... Um, and yeah, we'll just make this a great, great event, great live stream. Okay, moving on from yeah. collard greens. What else on. are you So growing? we had a few beds of some herbs. There was a dill bed here, so that has come out. But you can actually see it's decided to come back in growth. So you already, nice you already thing. pulled the dill out of this bed here? We pulled the, the mature dill out, but we've got all these nice little sprouts that we've actually been continuing to grow, to pull off of just because... They're there. You might as well. So, you so dill is as baby dill. Exactly. <laughs> um, so dill is a, a hardier crop. It's in the carrot family, actually, which is also another hardy crop that you can look into growing. A lot of times you can overwinter them throughout the whole winter and then have some of those uh, first carrots to market in the spring, and they're going to be really sweet. So nice. that's that's a fun little tip too. So what other crop are you growing right yeah, here? So this is a whole thing of cilantro. Really, cilantro. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that was so. That was uh, quite that cold hardy. But it's looking. Yeah, really good. it's. I mean, it's. I wouldn't consider it necessarily cold hardy. Maybe tolerant. It can mm. take a little bit of cold weather. Um, it doesn't do fantastic in the heat of the summer. So it's kind of an in between crop, I guess you could say. 
So about about so you'll probably terminate this when do you think? At what temperatures? Um, it'll probably terminate itself. Mm -hmm. uh, probably, you know, mid December when we're starting to get down to those, you know, 30, 35, somewhere in there, it'll start to to phase itself out. But I think from this bed, I mean, we can get probably two or three bunches per foot on this bed. Mm -hmm. So got quite a bit of cilantro here. All right, so what other varieties do you got that you would recommend for folks to focus on for growing in the winter time? Sure, so here's a couple other beds of stuff that was started in the last few weeks. Uh, we've got some green onions here, we call them bunching onions. They're just basically an immature onion that you can also call them scallions. Uh, so those guys are coming on. They'll take a little bit slower time to get ready just because it is sort of uh, the daylights are starting to go down, so that's what you're really running into is, is lack of daylight. But they will stick around for quite some time, and we should be able to harvest these probably end of December, maybe January, if if we get there. Uh, nice. We've got some lettuce coming on in here. I believe this is a Salanova from Johnny's. Shout out to Johnny's. <laughs> Johnny's Selected Seed Company, guys. If you're looking for good quality organic seeds, we definitely recommend them. That's oh, where yeah. pretty we much... Pretty much all, all of, of our stuff come from comes from. And then this gorgeous purple color here, this is a mustard that we're trying. I'm gonna start putting some of this in some of our spring mixes. We're trying Wait, for did a you say spicy. Like mustard, like mm -hmm. the like condiment mustard or like the greens? Like the greens. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I believe the condiment comes from mustard seeds, doesn't it? We we should find out because we should find I out. That mustard. sounds like a plan. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> yeah, so these too. are mustard. Look how greens. beautiful these are, you guys. Purple, green. I mean, you could put that in a bouquet of flowers. Oh yeah, they're gorgeous. And, and the nice thing with mustard, you can cut them at a baby stage like this. So we're gonna try and put some of this in our spring mixes. because it's not too spicy or too strong tasting right now. And then you can let it grow big and then you can actually sell it in bunches, kind of like collards. Awesome, okay, let's see what uh, the chat, what's up with the chat here? Okay, hey, Echo Blue Farms, thank you for setting up the alerts for our channel, you guys. If you don't have alerts turned on, hit that notification bell so when we go live you don't miss a thing. We also have an email sign up list where you can get notified every time we go live. We'll drop a link to that in the chat later on toward the end of the stream. Okay, we got a great question. Oh, oh, there was a question earlier I think from somebody asking about squirrels and varmints in the winter time and Dale Ooh. P just dropped a great, um, a great option for you to consider about how to deal with rodents. And then Ben Bradley wants to know about uh, a variety of collards that you would recommend in this area. area. And I, I think he's with, from Perrin, so down the okay. street, but what? Uh, yeah, I mean, the collards I'm growing right now are flash collards. It's a Johnny's variety. Uh, they seem to do pretty well. They're also uh, heat tolerant, so you can kind of start them a little bit earlier in the summer. Uh, and then they will continue through the cooler fall into into winter time so did you said flash flash, flash collards, collards. Mm -hmm. yeah cool. that's that variety okie dokie um let's see so i hope the you can use that tip ben okay um now we're pretty close to this greenhouse do you want yeah. to check that out real quick sure and see what's going yeah on there? so this is kind of in a little bit of a transitional stage in our greenhouse or our high tunnel here this high tunnel is going to, oh, there's no wind in here. And it's it so feels nice. a little bit warmer. <laughs> you can already feel it too, it's Guys, amazing. Guys, <laughs> we're just gonna spend the rest of the stream in this tunnel, so I hope you have a lot of questions about ginger and spinach. Oh and yeah. <laughs> just kidding. This was kind of our, our random catch-all tunnel now for the last uh, few weeks. So, I mean, we've got some lettuce growing in here. Uh, this is actually a Mizuna over here, which is an Asian green that we're also going to be using in our spring which mixes. One? This uh, little curly kind of looking. It's called Mizuna. Mizuna. It looks yes. like arugula. It does. It does. Um, but it's not as spicy. It's got a really just pleasant taste, and it's uh, it grows really quickly, which is nice for spring mixes. Mm -hmm. So um, that's also pretty cold tolerant as well. Um, and then on this far side, we've still got our cutting celery going strong. Which we will be pulling right that here. one out soon, pretty soon, yeah. Nice. And then of course, uh, parsley on the far end, which is also fairly tolerant. 
And in the center, our ginger, which we will be harvesting here probably yeah. in the next uh, two weeks or so. Ginger, I think that's just mm -hmm. so amazing. You know, I, I don't know why, but I think of ginger as like a <laughs> tropical thing. Right. And I don't know if it is or isn't, but just to see it growing here yeah. in central Arkansas is amazing. I think it's such a beautiful plant too. And it's gorgeous too. Even the leaves, as you brush past it, you can get kind of a whiff of that ginger smell, which and is you, really And nice. you guys, this ginger came from the grocery store. We, we <laughs> literally did. went to the grocery store, <laughs> bought a bunch of ginger, cut it up in pieces and put it in the ground and yeah, that's it. I don't know if it's always recommended, but it worked for us. Yeah. Um, I know that there are sometimes some viruses that you might want, might want to look out with, but for the most part, it's worked really well for us. Cool. we got some great questions coming in um, about high tunnels. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, just real quick, at home, Sheree says that her rocket and arugula are doing very well outside in colder temps. Yes. Cool. Yeah. We've got a whole bed just outside right now going on. And we'll show you guys that in just a minute. And I believe that's also in the brassica family. So there you go. It is. <laughs> okay, Fin Fin Twenty says, "What kind of tunnel is this?" And that's a great question. That is a good question. Um, we'd have to look back at our records. I don't remember who this one came from. This is one of our older tunnels. Right. Well, I guess not not the brand necessarily, but okay. I guess you know it's a what a twenty by. It's a thirty by, 30 by 90, 90. 95, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so what it is, is it's got this kind of gable sloping roof. We've got our, uh, just our trellising lines on the top. So you can use this for trellised things or just not if you're like what we're doing right now. This is going to be our flower tunnel coming up soon. We've got all of our bulbs that just came in. So mm -hmm. that's what this is kind of in the process of becoming. Mm -hmm. uh, but the nice thing about our high tunnels here is that you can actually roll down the sides. And I, I, th I think this one, most of our tunnels come from Zimmerman's. Is I it think. Zimmer's? I, I yeah. believe that sounds right. Yeah. yeah so so Fin Fin 20, um, this is a high tunnel. And mm -hmm. uh, like Sarah said, it's 30 by 95, 95 feet long. Um, and I believe it comes from a company out of Missouri, but it's, yes. it's Zimmerman's High Tunnels. It is out of Missouri. I do remember that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the roll up sides here, this is a yeah. really great feature. So I, you can tell I, we've gotten rolled up right now just to keep the uh, wind down, but you can actually roll these guys down it's handy so if you need a little bit of ventilation uh, a lot of times especially during the winter you'll have these all sealed up during the night time to keep them nice and warm but then during the day uh, with all of the passive solar energy that you're getting in here it gets pretty warm so you actually need to air it out in, in the middle of the day especially to get rid of all the condensation because that actually will block out some of the sun so these are very handy you can already feel the breeze coming through so i'm going to put it back up <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this roll down option is really great. A lot of people have like the roll up sides, yes. but mm -hmm. um, if you guys check out our channel, we got a really good uh, video all about growing in high tunnels. And one of the things we talk about in that video is just about how roll down options have been really helpful for us because it allows the heat to escape easier than if you roll up because that heat has to travel all the way down to the bottom and then the cooler air comes in the bottom. So. Yeah, because cool air tends to settle down low versus the hot air, which rises. So, yeah, so it's yeah. a little more expensive option, but if you can go for it, I think it's really worth it, especially it if in your handy. warmer environment. And I know there's some as well that actually vent from the top to let heat out, which is very handy. I think those are probably even more expensive, but very fancy and nice, but obviously not for just a backyard gardener. <laughs> Cool. Okay, let's uh, jump back to a question from Echo Blue Farms. Uh, yeah. He wants to know about growing lettuce. Um, okay. he, again, he's in Texas. Says yeah. it's you know still 90 degrees, <laughs> um, but he knows that lettuce doesn't like heat. Correct. When when would you recommend putting lettuce seedlings outside? What temperatures generally? Yeah, so, so like fall and winter you know, years. I think the lettuce that we've got out, we've already actually done, I think, two rounds of lettuce outside, and it's just now getting to the point where it's about 50, 60 regularly during the day. Um, so I think what you want to do, if you want to try and push it, if it's still 90 degrees outside, but you want to get your lettuce in sooner than later, you could even try some season extension the other way, where you're actually protecting them from the heat. Uh, you can put them under... Uh, you can do like shade cloths. Oh, oh I see some shade cloths. Oh, yeah, cloth we out actually there. just took down our shade cloth There's from there. Some shade cloth. Yeah, we haven't rolled it up yet, but we're <laughs> getting there. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can do shade cloths over them. Uh, sometimes you can mist them uh, to try and just keep that temperature a little bit lower. Um, so just trying to keep the temperature as low as possible to get your uh, little seedlings in. And then once it starts to cool down, you can take that all off and then just let them let them be and they'll enjoy the cooler weather. Cool. Yeah. 
All right, let's uh, step back outside. Yeah. We're spoiling ourselves in this nice warm <laughs> tunnel. Guys, we got more high tunnels to check out, so stick around for more of that to come. Uh, we just wanted to drop by this one really quickly, but as you can see, back in the background, we have caterpillar tunnels. Uh, inside the caterpillar tunnels are what are known as row, cro row covers. Yeah. They're like little bitty tunnels. Another big high tunnel back there. So we're gonna show you around all that stuff. Lots of different crops growing here at the ranch dozens of varieties so so much more to come hang out with us for as long as you'd like come back and check out the replay if you have to go uh, this video will be live or this video will be available on our channel after the live stream is over as well all right what's all right. back going on in the ground yeah we can kind of show you so i'm actually prepping you can kind of see the soil here starting to get prepped for something to go in and this is going to be where our leeks are going to go in so leeks is a good variety to grow in the mm -hmm. winter time yep leeks are so they can go in either in a really early spring um, or if you have a slightly milder winter like we tend to do uh, you can do them in fall which is what we're planning on doing uh, we're also doing that with our garlic as well we'll be doing getting those in in between our cat tunnels here in the next week garlic yep another good good mm -hmm. uh cool season crop yeah and with the garlic i mean that's just it takes so long to grow it'll go all winter and then you will end up harvesting that in summer oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a long one you can see our eggplants still hanging on here <laughs> oh yeah those don't grow eggplants in the winter guys. don't grow those in the winter <laughs> They we just would not stop producing, so we just kept them as long as we could. A great summer crop for sure. Yes, Especially absolutely. here in central Arkansas. Yeah. I always so, have a very bountiful harvest. Yeah, so this was kind of a little bit of our cutting green area. We've started letting some of them go. They're coming back. Um, this is actually beets. We've been harvesting beet greens for some of our spring mixes. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some loose leaf lettuce, the leftovers of uh, spinach bed. Here's our rocket or arugula. All right. So this is a cut and come again. Cut and come again. You can arugula. actually see the difference At home here. Ashray, see, we're doing it too. Yep. And then this variety right here, it's it's gotten a lot larger now because we've already cut it a few times. But it's one of my new favorites. Is another Johnny variety. It's called Tokyo Bacana. Which one is that? Uh, this lighter colored oh, okay. uh, lettuce. Uh -huh. You can grow it as a microgreen. You can grow it as a large bunching green like this size. Mm -hmm. um, but we've been doing it as kind of a baby green, and it. It's got a really nice taste to it, and it's a really good filler. Was that and in the bags mixes. that you put up at Metzger? Yes. Because I, yeah, guys, <laughs> I, I ate some of this for lunch yesterday, and it's so sweet. Really, really, it's I, really I, good. I took one bite of it, and what's it called again? Tokyo Bacana. Tokyo Bacana. Check that one out because mm -hmm. I put one bite in my mouth, and I thought, I mean, it was sweet. It was good. Yeah, it's another one of those Asian greens that I, I really like, and I'm going to keep doing a lot more with it. Um, and then we've got some more kale down at the end. You can see those. Uh, and some daikons back here as well. That's something we haven't mentioned. Radishes are another uh, good cool season crop. Uh, you can start them in the summer because they do need a little bit more heat to get those seeds started. Uh, we direct seed them directly into the ground and then you've got them. It, yeah, you can pretty much harvest them as soon as they're big enough. These so, are a, a white variety. And those are the ones right back there, right? Yeah, these big guys. I could pull one up and show you. Yeah, if let's like. do that. So um, daikon radishes, guys, one of the last crops in this row we're going to show you. And then we'll kind of do a recap just about what we've just talked about. So Ooh, they're big. All right. All right. So here we go. Nice. So this is a daikon radish. Uh, it's kind of an Asian radish variety. It's got really spicy flavor to it. This is called a mini mac. And these, uh, we also grow purple daikons sometimes too, yeah, right? Yeah, But this is a, like a white one, I yeah, guess. Yeah, so this is the white variety. You can see we actually just harvested an entire bed of, uh, it was called a red king. Uh -huh. So that one was a bright pink color. Mm. Um, We've got some more of those red kings over there and then yeah we've got some purple ones coming on as well so what what uh, yeah. what kind of um i guess markets do you find for for the radishes who's usually buying those you know we sell them in bulk a lot more um, just because they can store really long mm -hmm. so that's the also the benefit to doing a lot of these root crops your beets your radishes your carrots anything like that you can hold on to them for a while and just slowly sell them in increments, which is really great for market extension. Uh, just so that if you grew the same amount of lettuce all at once, it would be really hard to market 20 pounds of lettuce versus 20 pounds of daikon, daikons over time. So gotcha. that's really beneficial. We sell a lot of these out to Bell Urban out in Conway. They, they take them occasionally. Um, and then we've actually been doing more bulk ones for some CSAs out in Memphis. They've awesome. Been those, so so uh, yeah, all right, guys, let us know what you're growing. What markets are you finding? What success have you had for winter vegetables? Um, 
you got different vegetable crops that we haven't grown that you've mentioned. I see a lot of folks in the chat are asking about turnips. We'll get to that in just oh, yeah, a turnips. quick second. Delicious. Um, Carolyn Holmes says, happy Friday. Indeed, Carolyn, happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> Happy Friday to you, Carolyn. Mitzi Reynolds says, thanks, very informative. Thank you, Mitzi, for dropping by the live stream today and checking out everything that we're doing. Let's see. Okay, so back to cab back to turnips. Uh, yes, Carolyn, we did talk about cabbages briefly, but not a whole lot. So if you yeah. have specific questions, just let us know. Um, but let's ask about, um, let's, uh, let's talk about turnips yeah do we grow turn do we have any in the ground is that I, a good winter it crop? is another good winter one i'm actually getting ready to seed another round of i call them hacker eye turnips they're those white ones they're just really tender and not as spicy as the regular types um but yeah we we're gonna actually seed some of those in some of our cat tunnels coming up soon so a great winter crop yes we don't have them in the ground just yet mm -hmm. um but that probably just shows you just how hardy they can be. Yes. We're still holding off on those. Yeah, because that's the nice thing too. If it's getting too cold to be able to plant outside, I've got the option of my cat tunnels as well as the high tunnels. And then an additional option, you can put row covers on them inside. So there's a lot of different kind of ways that you can stack up that extra protection on your crops. Cool, all right, let's see. Um, Lindy Chick 360 from Oregon wants to know what's the URL for the seed company. That's Johnny's Selected Seed Company. Um, we will drop a link for you in the live chat. I believe Let's they're out see. of Maine. Yep, out of Maine. Uh, but they ship all over, even all the way to they Oregon. Do. Oregon, beautiful <laughs> state. You guys got some winter uh, challenges yourselves, so hopefully you'll find this live stream valuable and some good information for you guys. Uh, let's see, J.I. says rutabagas grow well for yeah. them in the winter. They love beets too. We did showcase a few beets very quickly, but that is a good crop as well. Yes, definitely. And they, those get sweeter too. For sure. Um, let's see. Okay, so just to recap, the crops that we're growing here outdoors in the open air that are great for growing vegetables in the winter time would Correct. be? So for outside during the winter, I would say your root varieties, your daikons, your radishes, your carrots, beets, um, rutabagas, you could do kohlrabi, uh, your collards, your kales, um, anything that's got that cool hardy type so where you don't have to protect them nearly as much. But the ones that you will start to need to protect them uh, you're looking at like your lettuces, some of your more tender greens, things like that. So they do enjoy cool weather, but they will be damaged from frost if you don't protect them during a hard freeze. Awesome. Great recap. Um, okay. And we got a few more things to show you guys. We're going to go check out uh, something that is in the ground that is going to grow through the winter, but won't be ready until May of next year. So can you guess what that is? If you think you know, type in the chat what crop <laughs> you think that is. Um, we got a couple more pieces of in infrastructure. We do want to show you our caterpillar tunnels. So we're going to check those things out. Thanks so much for hanging out with us here at Heifer Ranch live in Perryville, Arkansas in our three acre certified organic market garden. We go live at least once a month here on our channel. We have tons of content on our YouTube page for you to learn about uh, organic farming, market gardening practices, regenerative livestock management techniques, and so much more. A lot of great opportunities. Sign up for our email list. Check us out on the web. Um, more to come. Let's go check it out. All right, oh, let's oh, do it. Somebody already guessed. So we got two guesses for strawberries and two guesses for garlic. One of you is right, and we're going to show you in just a minute. <laughs> All right, let's do yes, it. Yes, leave that turnip there for me for lunch. For there later. you go. <laughs> That's, yeah, the, you caught it. I left great. it on the corner so I wouldn't forget it. <laughs> nice. Okay, so let's see. Who do you guys think is right? Um, my dear says garlic as well. We got three votes garlic, two, two votes strawberry, strawberries. Okay, this is the, this is our newest high tunnel, you guys. We just built this uh, last winter. Yep. Yeah. And we grew tomatoes in it. We did. This throughout is our all summer tunnel. long, and we have a big video all about how we grew all those tomatoes. Ten thousand pounds of heirloom tomatoes, you guys. We sh we've recorded the entire process from start to finish, from planting the seeds in the trays to harvesting them off the plants. That video is in post-production right now. So if you want to know how to grow tomatoes in a high tunnel or outdoors, whether you're just growing one single plant or if you want to grow 10,000 pounds yourself, subscribe to the page because that video is coming soon. All right, let's do the big reveal here. Let's do it. And the winner is <laughs> strawberries. Strawberries. <laughs> 
yeah so this is our our strawberry tunnel it's nice and calm in here <laughs> it is and we just put these plugs in the ground about so most of them been in the ground for almost two weeks now and so we are doing 12 beds in here which is a really tight spacing uh, but we're going to be very intentional with it and, and, and yeah we all... fit about 1500 plugs in here 1500 plugs mm -hmm. all organic strawberries nestled in the warm hay here yeah and you've already got some new growth coming on you can see this guy yeah that is <laughs> very nice so there you go so they're taking well they um, are they're doing really well in here and it's I, I, we put them in a little bit earlier this year than we did last year so we can hopefully get some more yields from them so stick around we'll see yeah and this is another v a crop that we're actually recording from start to finish as well for you guys to show you how we're growing strawberries in this entire tunnel don't know how many pounds it's going to be but it's going to be a lot we always sell out of strawberries we can't yes. grow enough people love them they're sweet and delicious if you don't know what crop to grow give strawberries a try uh you probably you probably won't regret it for sure and when that video comes out it'll help you in your journey okie dokie um so how long are somebody wants to know J.I. says, are these strawberries going to grow all year long? What's the life cycle of these puppies? Yeah, so generally speaking, if you're doing strawberries, uh, they are a what they call the biennial, so it takes two years for them to fruit. Uh, but because we are doing them in the fall and we are simulating an extra season for them, we're actually going to get fruits from all of these in uh, June, maybe May, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to be able to get them out of there, but we actually include these in our uh, crop planning as an annual. So we do these every year, but we rotate the location of them. So last year, all of these were in the cat tunnels. We're trying them in the high tunnel this year. Hopefully we like it. It's going to I think help a lot with the pest pressure. We're able to close up these sides and, and, and get a lot more pest reduction strategies going on in here. So fingers crossed. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's see. Jeannie McLaughlin asked uh, how many plugs. I think you said that. How many yeah. plugs do you have in here? Uh, just about 1,500 in here. 1,500. And mm -hmm. this is again a, a, a 30 by 95 foot high tunnel. Correct. Yeah. And you Our said beds you have are 12, about 90 feet long. And 90 foot beds. 12 yeah. different beds in here, right? Yep, 12 beds, yeah. So you guys do the math um, <laughs> and you can figure out how many we're putting in each bed here. You got pretty tight spacing, but mm -hmm. about um, eight inches, but we've got them on a diagonal to we'll, give them a little we'll extra. Come, next time we go live in the garden, we'll show you an update in here and I'm sure it'll look uh, really beautiful. And I can't, I can't wait. I think it's going to smell so wonderful oh, it's in gonna here. Be, and... I, I think it's going to be a lot more pleasant to harvest in here too. It's not as confined as the cat tunnels. So yeah, that's Exciting. a good point. Uh, let's see, we had a couple of questions about these strawberries. What soil or compost did you use for these strawberries? Sure. So because this is one of our newer uh, high tunnels, we're having to do a little bit more soil work in here than normal. We have a lot more rocks in here and the soil was really compacted when we first started because to be able to get this high tunnel up, it took a lot of tractor work. Um, so I did do a little bit more amendments than I would elsewhere usually. Uh, we did include some gypsum to try and uh, help with that compaction. Uh, if you have clay soil, gypsum's a really good idea to, to get in there to help with the tilth and to help uh, with that clay compaction. Mm -hmm. uh, we also did uh, some azomite to get some of those trace minerals in there, uh, which is really good for strawberries. Um, and then we did some feather meal, which mm -hmm. is kind of a byproduct from chicken industries. So it's just kind of ground up feathers. Awesome. Hey, great question again, Echo Blue. Thanks for <laughs> ch chiming in with that one. Yeah, this is a really new tunnel for us. The ground needs a lot of work still. Like, like Sarah mentioned, we put a ton of compost in here, a lot of amendments. Yes. Um, but I bet you anything in a year's time, this stuff is going to be looking totally different. As you can tell, you know, we're, we're picking out all the rocks as we go. <laughs> Yes, we're little, leaving little cairns everywhere. Making little cairns <laughs> everywhere, that's fun. There's even a little mushroom growing over here. You oh, can tell yeah. the... Must there be liking go. it in here. Okie dokie, all right. Farming is therapeutic, Carolyn. We totally agree. <laughs> yes, this is my zen place. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, ben Bradley asks, where did you get the hay? Oh, yeah. So we just got this from our local co-op in town. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually a straw, so you want to try and use... Uh, fairly reputable sources when you're getting your straw or hay because you want to reduce the amount of weed seeds that are in there. Um, there's also sometimes some pests that be can be hiding in your hay, so you want to make sure you know that it's a good quality and that you're actually just getting um, that straw. So that's what we've got laying down here, and it's kind of 
a combination of reasons for that. We've just, it's helping with the cool weather. It's trying to protect them during the cool weather as well as keeping down the weeds, so. Awesome. Yeah. All right, let's see. Um, so Megiddo Eubanks says that she grew, or they grew strawberries uh, in a back to Eden situation over sandy soil and had more than they could ever use. Fruit oh, the first such a good year. Problem. <laughs> strawberries you guys for sure let's see class bacher is that a relative of yours that maybe? is my dad he wants to say hi hi hey dad <laughs> hi thanks for watching your daughter's amazing super talented <laughs> i love working with her she's just really killing it out here at the garden at heifer oh, ranch in well, Fayetteville, arkansas <laughs> um let's see one more question about the strawberries and then we're going to move we'll go ahead and start walking outside yeah, but we will okay. answer this question from at home with sheree are you, re are you planting the same strawberry plants just in new locations or are you buying new each fall? That is a good question. Great question. Yeah, here, I'll answer that while we walk. Um, so we do buy new plugs every year. Um, it does allow for us to have a fully established plant every time we put it in. So it's got a root system and they root really easily. I don't think we lost a single plant from the ones that we transplanted in there. Uh, so that's always very helpful. Um, but a lot of times if you're doing it in your backyard with the, the strawberry plants, you can do, you can actually cut the runners as you go along throughout the season. You can root those, you can have uh, continuing daughter plants is what they call those. So uh, you can use the same plants um, from that original plant. I would not recommend exactly digging them up and replanting them. Uh, unless you really know what you're doing. Sometimes that bare root stuff can get a little tricky, but awesome. yeah. Yeah. Hey, you guys, great questions. Keep them coming. Um, you know, if you haven't chimed in yet, if you still got a burning question, don't be shy. Uh, we'll be, we'll be nice. We promise. And, uh, we would love to hear from you where you're at, what you're farming, what you're growing. Um, what you think of this live stream? What, what value do you guys find? What do you want to see next? Let us know. What do, <laughs> what do you want to learn about? We're always looking for new ideas. Uh, we want to build community here. I don't know if you can see, but way back there is a herd of sheep, part of our grass-fed, grass-finished sheep <laughs> operation. Uh, we have done some live streams with those guys in the past, and you can check those out if you're interested in raising sheep out on pasture. More of those to come as well. We're also recording a feature-length uh, video on how to raise sheep on pasture from start to finish, so that's coming to the channel soon too. What uh, crops do we have in the ground over here? More radishes. <laughs> More radishes. Yeah. We've talked about those a little bit if you want to add anything. But other. Yeah, so these are just a basic Easter egg variety. They're those kind of. Wait, did you um, say Easter egg? I did. Easter egg radishes. So ignore the weeds. They're getting a little out of hand. But we've actually got carrots growing in between here. Oh, okay. So this. So the is idea the is that you use the radishes to actually block out the sunlight for the majority of the weeds. So you can tell, I mean, it's less weedy here than, I mean, in that little walkway over there, you can see. Right. Um, so it's, and especially with the daikons, this has been working really well. But I had some extra Easter egg radishes. So they're all just different colors. They're all pastels. They're really oh, pretty. wow. <laughs> Are they the size of eggs? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I guess. They're kind of the same, just like those red bell ones that you often get, um, they're that size, so. So that's another thing that we do here out at Heifer Ranch, you guys. Uh, we, we grow the rainbow. Customers love <laughs> beautiful colors on the market they do. stand. Um, and yeah, so and it's also a really good marketing way to do it. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it draws customers in, especially if you're at like the farmer's market or anything like that. Color is huge. Absolutely. Yeah. So a couple more things to show you guys. Uh, we're going to walk by the cabbage here in just a second. I know yeah. somebody had a question about cabbage. We are growing inside caterpillar tunnels over there. We have some row crop tunnels in there, which are great techniques that you can use to grow vegetables throughout the winter time. So stick around just for a little bit longer and we're going to show you those things. If you have more questions, feel free to get them in and we'll be happy to chat with you. Yeah. Um, while we're walking up to the cabbages, Randy Neal says hello. Hey, Randy. Fin Fin 20 wants to know what sort of cover crops do you suggest? Oh, for so, winter specifically. Oh, for winter. So actually, this is a good spot to talk about that because I've got a cover crop in here. Um, so this is where we've got our cabbages right now. I'm doing a slightly smaller block because it's a kind of a trial that I'm doing. So there's a cabbage so, there, yeah. Yeah, you can see we've got our cabbage transplants and then this is actually a white clover mm -hmm. that I have transplanted, or not transplanted, but we just broadcasted the seeds here. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some newer ones. We, we had to go through and do a double seeding so they're not as perfectly seeded as I would like, but the idea is that with these low growing, cold hardy crops, that will cover the ground and for the majority of the winter, it will keep the weeds un uh, under control for the cabbages to grow up. So, so 
Clover, great cover crop. Clover is great. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually got some field peas and let's see what else is over there. Some daikons actually I'm using as a cover crop. Yeah, you guys probably, a whole field. probably can't see, but that block back there, way in the, it's a whole field. Um, and then the one next to it was cover crops and then we terminated the cover crops yeah. and grew our winter squash in that one those. was uh, that was a summer cover crop of oh, yeah, uh, sudan that... grass and nice yeah. okie dokie um let's see and that's a whole topic that you could really get into with the cover <laughs> hey, crops a new question coming into the chat grateful blooms thanks for joining us grateful we're glad you're here they want to know about flowers can you imagine that grateful blooms wants to know about flowers <laughs> They want to know if we're growing any flowers in the fall and winter, and if so, which ones? Yeah, so for the majority of the flowers that we're doing, we're actually putting in bulbs. Um, whew, that's loud. Um, we actually, literally just today, the semi dropped it off. We got all of our tulip bulbs in uh, the mail. So we're gonna be planting about 8,000 tulip bulbs coming up. Probably in the next two weeks. It's all happening in the next two weeks, guys. Tulips, Don't worry, it'll get done. Yeah. So tulips? <laughs> tulips are coming in. Um, I'm going to be starting some anem anemones. Mm -hmm. uh, say that one five times fast. Um, <laughs> so we're doing some of those. Uh, but for the majority of your winter stuff, it's either you've already started it and it's a cold hardy type perennial, uh, or it's a bulb that you're putting in and getting ready for an early spring bloom. So awesome. that's kind of where we're cool. at. Yeah, so some good flowers that you can grow. Grateful Blooms, are you growing flowers? What are you going to grow in the fall and winter? Let us know. Um, let's see, Melody Conister says, Conatzer says, uh, thanks for sharing the information with us. Very timely. Thanks for joining us, Melody. Glad to see you here in the chat. Lindy Chick 360 says the live chat is fun and they're having a good time. Well, good. I'm glad. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're <laughs> always having fun as well. Um, Maggie Arin says, this is awesome. Thank you. Hey, thank you guys for the feedback. We really yeah. appreciate hearing from you. Um, it's good to know we're not just talking to an empty screen Indeed, here. indeed. <laughs> I think we got people from all over the world. Who thinks they are watching from the farthest apart place from Arkansas in the United States? That's where we are at. How far <laughs> away from Arkansas are you? Let us know in the chat. Um, let's see, Calendula Blooms. In the winters, oh, something like Jay. Yeah, yeah. Calendula, thank you. Those are good. They're growing those. Uh, let's you see. You can also do, I mean, sweet peas you can start early. Uh, you can start snapdragons early. Oh, there's all kinds. You could, I could do a whole one of these on flowers. <laughs> <laughs> that, we just might have to do that. And flowers sell really well, guys. They if you're do. not growing flowers and you got a good market, um, give them a try. Customers love them. It's like a cup of coffee. It's like, it's like coffee, you know, people will pay $5 for a cup of coffee when it doesn't take you that much to make a cup of coffee, but it's just yeah. a nice, tr nice treat for yourself. And oh yeah, and you know, start with same. zinnias. You can't go wrong with zinnias, zinnias and perfect. they are so gorgeous and they're, they just make you happy and that will get you hooked. Okay, I so I, I, I know someone asked about cabbage. I do want to show you. These are some of our old cabbages we that did, did split. We but... did have cabbage. Sarah's like, don't show them these, <laughs> Don't please. show those. Here's a pretty one, it's not bad. So yeah, we, we had a this, right? we had a deer problem a little hey, bit early in the season that's there. That's funny because somebody asked about deer. Oh, did they? <laughs> and it is Ben Bradley. He says, are deer a problem in your field? So yes. Oh, yes, yes they, they absolutely are. are, yes. They are. But I'm actually, I'm currently working on trying to put up a living fence type of a hedge around our garden that will help to bring birds in and also keep deer out. All right. So that will be coming. <laughs> okay, let's see. Trinidad and Tobago, that's pretty okay, far. that's pretty far. Kennedy, let's see who the winner is here. Um, Trinidad and Tobago is pretty far. And then Laos, Nigeria is wow is really far. But I think, yeah, whoever was watching from Australia earlier. That's pretty far. That's probably the <laughs> farthest one. Hey, but hey, we love that. How cool is that, you guys? Everyone from all over the world hanging out live, <laughs> chatting about farming, talking about raising vegetables. That's what this is all about. Thank you guys for being here with us. Yeah, let's so, talk cat tunnels? Yes, yes. Yeah, we, we'll skip these first two. They're yep. still under construction. Um, so this is another are. way, another great piece of equipment. Yeah. You can use to grow vegetables. is a little Ooh. noisy, but... They are noisy. So what is this called? So this is called a caterpillar tunnel. I call them cat tunnels for short. Uh, they're just named that way because the, the shape that they make when you tighten the plastic down over them, they kind of look like big caterpillars. Mm -hmm. And they are technically a, a mobile type of a season extension device. So you can, unlike our high tunnels, which are really permanently attached where they're at, these guys are only attached to the ground with some rebar in the ground. And so all you can do 
do is you just take off the tops and you pull out your poles and you can actually move them all over the field. Uh, so these have technically been here for two seasons now. Mm -hmm. They did have strawberries in them. Um, we didn't use them a whole lot over the summer, uh, but next summer I've got some plans to start using them more. We've got some carrots coming up in this row here, you can see, and so some loose leaf oh, here are the carrots. lettuce. Wait, what are these? Lettuce? Those are the lettuces. Guys, if it's too noisy in here, let me know. I will get out. Um, but we got some lettuce here. Let's see, some carrots. And I'll show you here. under the row cover too. We've got some gorgeous bok choy in here. Okay, so this is the row cover. Yes. And what is this uh, white fabric stuff? So this white fabric, wow, there's a whole fire ant nest there. Oh Look at gosh. that. We gotta show everyone. <laughs> Check it out, guys. The joys of uh, growing vegetables in the south. We're raising fire ants here at Heifer Ranch. Yeah, yeah. Customers <laughs> don't love them. They're uh, added bonus in our our produce each week. So okay, here's so our. Okay, so you got Agrabond fabric. Yeah, so this is Agrabond, which is uh, one of the brands uh, that you can get for row covers. You've got Agrabond, you've got Rime. There's all kinds of different ones, but it's basically a spun fabric. Uh, you can see through it. Uh, so it, light gets through, uh, water gets through, so you can technically use it out in the field and if it's raining it'll still let some of that water through and it will technically also let the, some of the gases out as well from the plants. So it's uh, mostly used for season extension as we're talking about. Uh, so it'll raise the temperature just a little bit in the air surrounding the plants. So you can see in here. Yeah, nice and warm. Woo, need to weed, but yeah, it looks gorgeous. Nice, check that out. You said this is bok choy, right? Yep, this That's is bok choy, which is also another hardy variety. And really the only reason I am using a cloth on these guys right now is for flea beetles, which really love bok choys and a lot of those Asian greens. So you can also use it as a pest suppression, so. Cool. Yeah. All right, so caterpillar tunnels row crop covers guys we're gonna sign off here in just a little bit so if you got any last minute burning questions uh get them into the chat and we'll we'll be happy to chat with you about whatever you want to know um let's see everyone says it looks delicious Woo! here get we can move in the next one it might be less noisy yeah i think i'm about to blow away <laughs> um Woo! All right, J.I. says this all looks oh, so delicious. Hey guys. <laughs> we agree. What's You're going to be in the film. <laughs> so we are putting in some lettuce in here. This is the one we just prepped a lot of soil in. Uh, so all of these are going to be greens that we've got in the majority of these tunnels. And, yeah. and, and would you briefly um, mention who these kind folks are <laughs> and how they got here and what other people. Yeah, absolutely. What a great opportunity. Exactly. This is Wade and Infinity. We'll say hi, guys. Oh, look at you. You've even got your heifer hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought you were typing questions. Oh my gosh. So Wade and Infinity. So these are two of our volunteers here. Wade's actually been working a lot with livestock recently. And then uh, Finn has been in the garden here. They're part of that uh, volunteer program that we have. Yeah, let me jump in here and tell you guys about that. So um, if you're interested in getting on-farm experience, you want to get your hands literally in the dirt, <laughs> like you can see right here. If you want to learn how to grow things in the, on an organic vegetable garden, if you're interested in regenerative agriculture, pastured poultry, grass-fed and finished beef, boy, do we have an amazing opportunity for you. <laughs> we have a residential volunteer community here at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas, where you can come live on site, learn with pros like Sarah, uh, our livestock team and and stay as long as you like really and um, and learn so much about regenerative agriculture so check us out check out a link in the description of this video in the chat wherever we drop it if you're interested in getting uh, first ha like hands-on experience on a farm this is one of the, this is the best opportunity in the country for you to do that I firmly believe that of everything that is out there um, so check it out it people are sleeping on heifer ranch you guys don't sleep on us check it out okay all right let's see anything else you want to cover yeah i mean i guess we could just talk about the, the caterpillar tunnel that was, a, so. that was a pun anything else you want to uh, cover, cover. <laughs> oh that was good uh, so like in the high tunnels you can actually lower the sides up and down to actually allow for some of that venting and in caterpillar tunnels you can do the same thing because it's all held together with these tension ropes over the tops mm -hmm. so you can see the side here has been rolled up to allow for a little extra, uh, it was pretty hot, you know, what, two weeks ago or something. So when we were working in here, it was very hot. So you can actually raise up those sides and get a little bit more ventilation in there. Uh, but then you can roll them back down as it gets cooler, which is what we're starting to do. 
Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us here at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. Um, Grateful Blooms, Carolyn Holmes, Lindy Chick, Maggie Arenz, Ben Bradley, all you guys, everyone hanging out, asking questions. We appreciate you. Uh, Grateful Bloom says they're growing sweet peas, black eyes, Susan's, okay. Scabiosa, Lake Spur, yes. and some other flowers Ooh. in Shady Point, Oklahoma. That's awesome. We're trying Scabiosa for the first time this year. Nice. They're gorgeous. Well, if you, <laughs> hey, great, Grateful Blooms, if you got an Instagram or a Facebook, uh, yeah. drop, drop a link in the comments or the chat so we can check you guys out. We'd love to meet you. Um, all right, Lindy Chick, everybody. Hey, that's going to do it for us here at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. If you found value in this video, if you enjoyed hanging out with us, subscribe to the YouTube channel, sign up for the notifications, click that little bell, sign up for our email list, come live with us here at the ranch. So much fun times ahead. Appreciate everyone from all around the world, whether it's the middle of the night, the morning or the afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us here at Heifer Ranch. If you want to check out the replay, it'll be available as soon as this live stream is over. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. Awesome job.